Hello everyone, my name is Max and I'm a speaker for Mephro Live channel and in this video I'm going to discuss how to find Wedermont determinant by using recursive relation. If you're gonna like this video, I welcome you to find my uh, find the link to my channel in the description and subscribe. And what I'm doing right now, I'm covering linear algebra and analysis. And in the future, I'm planning to start the complex analysis when, where we're going to find super cool integrals. And again, thank you for watching and enjoy this video. Hello guys, in this video I want to discuss how to find the determinant of this matrix. And this determinant is a particular case of the Wadermond matrix where n is equals to 4. So this matrix is 4 by 4. Okay, so one of the uh, like straightforward solutions is just take our determinant and find uh, the value of the determinant by using uh, row expansion. So you take any row or any column and just expand the determinant. But I choose uh, case uh, where n is equals to 4. Why? Because it's not too easy or and not it's too difficult. But if you're gonna try to do this problem straightforward, you can see you will have a lot of calculations. But there is another approach how we can find the value of the determinant pretty easily. And I'm going to show it right now. So if you want to find uh, the value of the determinant, we need to find the some pattern. And the pattern is that the first column is all ones, the second column is x0, x1, and x2, x3. The third column is the same thing squared, the uh, fourth column, everything q. And we're going to simplify this problem if one of the, our terms are going to be zero or we're going to do some uh, de determinant manipulation. So what should we do? We should start, uh, let's rewrite our determinant. And for simplification, I'm going to just keep uh, straight lines on the... Let's just rewrite our determinant. Okay, and what we can do with determinants, we can take one row, multiply by some constant and add to another row. And the same we can do with our column. column. And let's do one thing, let's take our third row, multiply by x naught and add to negative x naught and add to my fourth row, to my fourth row, and let's see what we're gonna get. Our third column uh, is still unchanged because we didn't do anything to it. But our last column is gonna be consists of such terms. We're gonna have x naught cube minus x naught cube. Why? Because we multiply this by negative x naught and add to the fourth row. But what about this one? For this one we're going to have x1 cube minus x1 square x naught. What about next one? We're going to have x2 cube minus x2 square x naught. And what about last one? We're going to have x cube 2 minus x uh, cube square times x naught. And let's first simplify it a little bit. The first thing we can see is that our, this uh, entry is going to be zero. So we can write zero over here. The second thing that we can see is that here we can uh, factor x1 squared. So let's do it. We're going to have x1 squared. So we factored our x1 squared. In the same pattern we can factor x2 squared and x3 squared. So let's do it. Okay, and after our manipulation, when we multiply this column by negative x naught and add to the fourth column, we got this row. And le let's repeat the same process for this column. Let's take this column, multiply by negative x naught and add to the, this one. And let's see what we're going to get. So for the first one, I'm going to have negative x naught squared. For the, this one, I'm going to have x1 uh, uh, times x naught. For this one, I'm going to have uh, minus x2 x naught and for the th this one is negative x3 and x naught and we can see that again this term is going to be zero yeah and it's zero what about this term about this term we can factor x1 so let's do it it's done and the same way let's finish these two terms we can factor x2 and x3 okay and we can see after we take our second row to the third one, we're going to get this, oh, our column, sorry, we're going to get this column. 
And let's repeat this process one more. Let's take our first column, multiply by negative x naught, and add to the second column. And from here, I can see that the first entry in our uh, and from here, I can see that the, this entry is going to be zero. And then in our determinant, we have that first row has one and zero element and all zero elements. So it means we can expand this determinant corresponding to the first row. So let's do it. So like the whole thing is actually going to be equals to. Uh, so how are we going to do this? We're going to take this element and cross out the first row and the first column. And our left is going to be our determinant. So we're going to get the following thing. And in this determinant, I can see that first, uh, first row is a multiply of a uh, term where my term is x minus x naught x1 minus x0, x1 minus x0. So what I can do, I can factor this element. And also I can factor, you can see I can factor x2 minus x0 from our second row and x3 from uh, minus x0 from our third row. So we're going to get uh, x minus x0 times x2 minus x0 times x3 minus x0 and what, and what we're going to left, we're going to left with the following determinant. 1, x1, x1 squared, 1, x2, x2 squared, 1, x3, x3 squared. And in the end, we got the determinant, which is exactly what, as of our previous one, but in the case when our matrix is 3 by 3. So we can do a small trick. We can take that this determinant is equals to V4 and name this one is equals to V3. So we can write this as a recursive relation. So we can say that V4 equals to X1 minus X0 times X2 minus X0 times X3 minus X0 times v3. So if you want to continue, keep continuing expanding, we want to write our v3 in terms of v2. So let's actually do it. We can say that our v3 is equals to, let's find a pattern. We have 4 and we always subtract the smallest element in our determinant. So the smallest element is here is x1. And uh, what is our the biggest element? The biggest element is x3. So I'm going to have x3 minus x1 times x2 minus x1 times v2. But what is our v2? v2 is just determined in the following form. It's 1 x2, 1 x3. And what is the value of this determinant? The value of this determinant is going to be exactly as x3 minus x2. So we can say that the whole thing our determinant is equals to x minus x naught, x2 minus x naught, to product of these terms times v3, which is product of these two terms. And lastly, v2, which is the product of this term. So just x3 minus x2. And we are done. Why? Because we know that the value of the determinant is going to be just this long product. One small uh, comment about this determinant. If all entries of x are distinct, this determinant is invertible. And another comment that we can write this determinant in the following form. As, as product of i less than, strictly less than j, xj minus xi, where, uh, this is, I think this is going to be enough. Yeah. So all determinant can be written simply as this formula. And if you want to show uh, that uh, in the case when our determinant is n by n, we're basically going to repeat the same process. And I really like this proof because it doesn't use mathematical induction. 
Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, share, and I really appreciate that you're watching my channel. Thank you.